welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysig, my partner, Malik Hill. We're back after the big Super Bowl weekend, and we're headed right into a lot more sports as we uh, move along here. College basketball is starting to wind down. We're only, it's like basically a month away, because I think the tournament starts March 14th, I believe. Um, we got past the trade deadline. We got so much sports ahead of us. Uh, it's one of my favorite times of the year, to be honest, um, because everything just kind of rolls into each other. Super Bowl into, if you're interested in it, the Daytona 500, in the NBA All-Star Weekend, into um, March Madness, into the Masters, into NBA Finals, all that stuff. It's a great time. Um, quick shout-outs to Michigan State. Um, my thoughts are with them in this crazy time. We're not going to get into it because I'm sure, you know, everybody's aware of the problems that have gone on there on Monday. Um, so some of their games have been postponed. So we can't really talk about Michigan State. Really, we will preview Michigan State, Michigan uh, coming up this weekend, which I believe they're still going to play on Saturday. Um, yeah. So right away, we're going to get right into uh, the Super Bowl. Malik, how was your Super Bowl weekend? How was your watching experience? How did that go down? Did you have good snacks? Had uh had good food. Had people over. It was a good time. I hear so many people talk about how they <laughs> people watch the Super Bowl for commercials more than the game. And okay. I've never cared that much about the commercials. Like if if some of them are funny, cool. Mm-hmm. But I just care about football. So I lo- I lo- this is not <laughs> this might not be good. I love the fact that people hated the commercials in this Super Bowl. Oh, they were awful. And I I just don't care. Yeah. I don't care. See, All the people that show up to Super Bowl parties and show up places to watch the Super Bowl, Bowl for commercials. Mm-hmm. Ha ha ha. Yeah. This is football. Yeah. It's what it's about. Right. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on both sides of that, I guess. Uh, because I enjoy that people come together for the Super Bowl for more than just the game necessarily. And they do want to see the commercials and things like that, but man, those commercials were awful. They were normal commercials. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they were horrible commercials. They were just commercials. Yeah, and I think that's why people hated them so much because mm-hmm. they expected some extra, whatever. Yeah, and I don't know. Like, Besides the Breaking Bad, like that was like the one that stood out. Yeah. Well, and like, uh, my coworker and I were talking about like the one that Hellman's mayonnaise put out. With John Hamm and Brie Larson, like what? What? <laughs> I remember it. They. I just watched it and I was like, okay, it seems like a, a commercial you just regularly see yeah. with John Hamm and yeah. And Brie not only that, but like it takes millions to get a commercial in the Super Bowl. Then you have to pay out John Hamm, which I'm sure is not cheap. Then you have to pay out Brie Larson, which I'm sure is not cheap. Then you decide to put Pete Davidson in it as well, like. They spent so much money just to make a commercial about mayonnaise. And like Joe was saying, what kind of mayonnaise companies are there? There's You got Hellman's and you got Miracle Whip. Yeah, basically. Does anybody else buy any other mayonnaise? <laughs> sure, you can buy like your generic store brands. But like mayonnaise is not like a competitive <laughs> environment. How about that Jack Harlow Triangles commercial? Did you like that one? Uh, it was okay, but it drug on. Like, it kept going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest complaints was the uh, electric Jeep commercial. What happened? I don't remember. <laughs> what uh, was they, it? They were just advertising electric Jeeps, and then at the very end, they're charging their Jeeps in, like, the middle of a mountainside. And I know that, you know, it's for show. It's to make it look pretty. But who's... Where you're driving a Jeep, and most of the time, the people driving Jeeps are not going to be buying electric vehicles. They're not going to be tr- be able to find a charger where they want to go off-roading with their Jeeps. It was like the Jeep Wrangler. Now, if it was maybe like their SUVs and stuff, okay, maybe there's an argument there. But because they were driving like a Jeep Wrangler on the side of the mountain, into the desert, all this stuff, and then acting like they can just charge it wherever, like that's that's not real. It, it's just, I don't know. It, it's the little things like that that make me upset. <laughs> And I'm the villain because I think it's hilarious no, that I, these commercials are like affecting people's. It was kind of nice though, because like every time they went to a break, I was like, "Well, I'm not missing anything. I might as well just get up, take a bath, bathroom break, grab a snack. Like, 
I'm not missing anything. Whereas normally you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to miss that one good commercial or something like that. Last year, the only one I really remember was that Sopranos like car commercial. Yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. like what was the big one besides that last nah, year? I don't know. I can't tell you. I, I I'm, I'm not a big commercial guy either, but it is nice when there's like you know that one standout. Commercial. I'll agree. Like I, I'll enjoy when there are better commercials, but also if they're if they're just regular commercials, really. Eh. Yeah. So well, what? I know like the one standout for my coworker. He's a big, you know, Batman guy. So in the Flash the trailer that for one, the Flash, and Michael that's Keaton what shows got me. Up, like he was like all excited. I'm like that movie looks like trash. That that trailer was amazing. I don't know. I think the what movie looks about. bad. The, I think the movie. You are the bad. only person I've heard say anything I, close to that. that trailer. Looked amazing. I'm a DC hater, and I feel like people are just excited. Okay, okay. I think people are just excited because they saw Batman. I think it's I think, a I think big it, nostalgia rip awesome. that they went for. I think it looked. I mean, that was a part of it. That was a part of it. But I think it. I think it looked awesome. What looked bad? <laughs> See, this is something we got to talk about after. Yeah, we'll now. talk about it after. You said you're a DC hater, so you probably just a, think it all. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. About we're it. not a movie podcast, but <laughs> um, okay. What What did you think about halftime? Halftime? I thought it was cool. Yeah, I I thought since Jay Z was there, he might come out for Rhonda's yeah, town. I, I always hope but, for the the guest, and Rihanna didn't bring anybody out. Yeah. Also, she didn't dance much because it, no. it looked like she was pregnant. That's what that's what the biggest talk was. Yeah. Everything trending on social media was pregnant, pregnant, pregnant. Right. It was trending everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Because she didn't move around a ton. Mm-hmm. But hey, she she's got a lot of hits. She yeah. played her hits. It wasn't super long. It yeah. ended, and everybody was like, "Oh, that's it." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I guess." My my wife was kind of hating on it because <laughs> I don't know. I guess she doesn't like Rihanna and like. Oh boy. Doesn't know that Rihanna's like one of my celebrity crushes, I guess, or forgot. Um, and I was like, she's like one of the biggest artists of our generation yeah. that you don't you, like you forget about. Um, because I mean, it was a while ago that she was like really yeah. popping off. She made her music and she's disappeared and become a billionaire. Right. Um, but I thought it was pretty good. It's better than I think last year. I felt was like last year the weekend. No, last year was the uh, hip hop and rap. Well, that well that I'm a hip hop head, so well, I, I love it. And so am I, but I felt like because they had brought so many people in, it didn't feel like anybody got to shine in that. And that one, I felt like they would have done better if it was longer, because it just felt like they. I missed mean, out. I, w- I wished it was longer. Yeah, because it just felt like they missed out on so many opportunities. If every person, if every artist got to do like right. Half of two songs, and I think that, that would have been long. That was more of my disappointment, I guess. It was because that one was so hyped up, and yeah. everybody was so excited. The one about with that. the weekend was the one where I was like, yeah. I don't think he's earned this yet. Yeah, like was... he has some hits, but like Blinding Lights had just come out. That yeah, right. That, that was a weird one. So it was, it was all right. Um, she sang Umbrella, so I was happy. Okay, we'll get to the game now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Super Bowl is always, you know, a little bit of everything. Um. This was the third most watched uh, TV event in history. The only other two were the Patriots versus the Seahawks, where, you know, that game ended on the last play. And the Patriots and Falcons Super Bowl, which we all know, the 27-point curse. Um, Those were the only other two televised events that were higher. Um, Rihanna's halftime was actually the most watched ever, if it was, Mm. like, for the full Super Bowl. Um, but that's where the viewing peaked um, during the Super Bowl was at halftime, of course. Um, I can't remember the number, but it's huge, of course. Um, but the game itself, what do you think about the game? I thought it was pretty good. We'll talk about the ending in a minute. But overall, how did you feel about the game? I I was enjoying every second of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jalen Hurts, he has to go up the rankings because he, he was out there quarterbacking. Yeah, I saw that was a tweet. I was like, there was some quarterbacking going on out there. Mm-hmm. Dimes were being dropped, high level reads were being made, and Jalen Hurts outside of that fumble, right, which turned out to really be like the, the difference. Yeah, the difference. He was close to perfect. I mean, he was mm-hmm. he almost outplayed Pat Mahomes. Yeah, in terms of just sitting back there and throwing some, the football. Like a lot of people pointed out, the accuracy on some of his balls. He was that game. yeah. And then they there were a few ones that ended up being incomplete. Yeah. Because they were either dropped or receivers didn't mm-hmm. get two feet in. But he was dropping them right in yeah. the bucket. And I do want to give some credit because I don't feel like people gave enough credit to Dallas Goddard. Some of the catches that he made, 
yes, Jalen Hurts put them in the perfect spot for him, but he also had to like overcome some good defense too to catch some of those balls. So I just think he needs he deserves some of the props um on that. But that connection was really critical on some plays. Yeah, but I I think this this is a another game that shows when you play the Chiefs and you play Pat Mahomes, if you don't put them away pretty early, mm-hmm. they're gonna hang around and they're most likely gonna win. Yeah. You can't have the fumble. Mm-hmm. You can't have multiple field goals. You have to score and score and score. Yeah. You you almost have to be close to thirty points by halftime. Right. And then you have to keep it going after halftime. Yeah. That's what I was saying basically the whole game. Um because I had picked the Eagles to win. I made a couple bets on it. And the whole time I'm like, man, the Eagles feel like they're really in control. They kept showing like time of possession. The Eagles are almost double what the Chiefs had. And I was like, man, but they're only up by like six points. Yeah. And that fumble was huge because they were up by a touchdown at the time. And you felt like they were on the momentum to score again, go up by two scores and be able to kind of run away with the game almost. But yeah, like you said, Patrick Mahomes being in the game, giving Andy Reid extra time to draw up plays, like it's it's too hard, it's too too difficult to stop. And you know, everybody was so worried at halftime about Patrick Mahomes' injury, and I'm I kept saying like, this is the Super Bowl. You <laughs> sent a message to us at halftime in our little group chat about how they're going to inject him with whatever to get him through it. <laughs> Um, and partially that's true, but at the same time, like just knowing from experience, if you've ever sprained your ankle or something like that, yes, it hurts a lot, but it's only going to get worse. So if you, you can play through it, it's not going to end his career. It's not going to hurt him for starting next season. It's only going to hurt him after the Super Bowl. So really you can play through it. It's going to suck, but you know, you got the adrenaline going, it's somewhat loose. Um, and as soon as you stop, like you're not going to be able be able to get going again so he's going to be able to play through it so I was never fully worried about it um it was more so if he tweaked it again or something like that um but yeah it it was crazy um controversial ending though let's get into that a little bit so at the end of the game um Chiefs were looking for a first down basically um a lot of people thought you know Eagles were going to get their stop they were going to be able to hold him to a field goal, and get a chance to see Jalen Hurts. Can he do what people maybe thought he could do in that game? Uh, Give him 90 seconds to try to win a Super Bowl. And they called a holding on, uh, what was it? I can't remember who it was. It wasn't Bradbury, was it? Uh, I don't think so. I can't remember the player. Was it C.J. Gardner-Johnson? It might have been Bradbury. It was one of Actually, those two. I think it was him. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think he admitted afterwards that it was holding. Um, he grabbed a little bit of Juju's jersey. And Patrick Mahomes kind of made an errant throw, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it was going to be catchable. I don't think the holding really mattered. Not that the refs are going to take that into account uh, during the play. Um, but what did, what did you think about the call? A lot of people were, you know, blaming the refs, mad at the refs. Um, what, what was your take on it? I think it's a call that you shouldn't make in that type of situation in the Super Bowl, especially since in most situations when a receiver gets held or grabbed at like the first five yards of his route, Mm -hmm. it's usually never called. Yeah. DBs usually have those first like four or five yards Mm -hmm. to like establish some kind of like ground or contact. It wasn't a whole lot of, he grabbed his Jersey a little Mm -hmm. Juju kind of separated after he grabbed his jersey, and then Pat Mahomes overthrew it. Mm-hmm. And they didn't throw the flag at first. Right. Like, it wasn't an immediately – actually, I can't how, – how quick was it? Because it seemed like it took, like, a few seconds yeah. for them to throw the flag. Mm-hmm. Everybody thought it was fourth down. And then as soon as they threw the flag, you immediately realized this game is – it's, it's over. Yeah. Like, the Chiefs have won. Mm-hmm. And we just went through this entire awesome game – one of the best Super Bowl games we've seen in a minute. Yeah. And this is how it's going to end. Right. Like, the Jalen Hurts just had this incredible performance, and he won't get one more chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah, it was deflating right. in the end. Yeah, and, and I agree. The, and the couple points that I've heard that are, in my opinion, good points is, like, you know, if 
with consistency of the game, there was not that many penalties throughout the game. And they hardly had been calling holding. I don't think there was a holding penalty all game until then. So why now are you deciding to start calling these holding penalties? It, you know, we know probably occur almost every play. Um, a lot of the petty little grabs and stuff like that. Um, why now did you decide to throw it? Um, and yeah, the other biggest thing too is like, even if it was the the right call and stuff, the annoying part, I guess, as a fan, as a viewer, is that it just deflated the whole moment. Yeah. Um, and now, like you said, that penalty comes out and you're like, man, the game, the game's over. And unless, you know, Jarek McKinnon had a lapse of judgment and he didn't go down and they scored, then maybe there was a chance, but he would made the right call. He got down on the ground and ran the clock out. And that's a whole nother thing that I hate about football. And I know there's no, there's no way you can change it. There's no, like I've thought about it before. There's no like rules you could really set in place but I hate that after the two minute warning if a team has used all their timeouts that you can just kneel four times and end the game so if you get past that two minute warning and all the timeouts are used and then you know the game is over to me that is like one of the worst things in sports it just it just stinks because you're like especially in a moment like this where like the game was so good and then you have to sit here for two minutes knowing the game is over already um I don't know. It, it's a thing that football has, and it always has, um, but it's just one of those minor things that's always kind of bothered me because I, I always want, you know, the the intensity at the end of the game. Like, in basketball and things, if a game is close, the last two minutes can be crazy. We've seen it in March Madness all the time. But in football, you do get those moments. Um, but if, you know, a, a timeout has to be used or something, and I get that's the the tactical part of the game, the strategic part of the game that you can do that in the last two minutes. It just, I don't know, it deflates it a little bit for me. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd want to say one thing. Taking away the call, Jalen Hurts gave them a touchdown, and the Eagles' defense didn't show up. Yes. After dominating for most of the season. Mm-hmm. So they still put it on themselves. Right. The ending was still deflating, mm-hmm. but the Eagles, they, they made the mistakes that cost them the game. The NFL leading sack team, did not get a sack on Patrick Mahomes. Hassan Raddick has been going crazy for yeah. most of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a little bit of credit to, you know, Andy Reid and his offense, um, things like that, scheming against that. But, yeah, it's, it's disappointing for the Eagles defense for sure. Um, not really getting any takeaways, which is something they're also good at. Um, and one other gripe that I have, at the end of the game, why are you trying to make Jalen Hurts throw it 70 yards into the end zone? He didn't even get close. He should know his power. Um, the team should know his power. In that scenario, please just run a hook and ladder or something. Just give an attempt. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. I've probably talked about it before. Same thing with basketball. If you try to make a full court pass to try to get a tip-in layup, your likelihood of that is so much less than if you were to just pass it to half court and shoot it from half court and maybe make that, but you get a shot off. Whereas if you throw it full court and you maybe don't even hit the guy, you don't get a, a shot at it. I always side on the part of give yourself a shot at a miracle than way less odds of making the more, I don't know, easy play, I guess, that if you get it, that you're winning. Um, but like that last call for the Eagles, yes, I know it's five seconds, it's basically over. But give yourself a chance. Throw it to somebody that can make a move or do something. Maybe a guy trips and falls and you make it in the end. I mean, the the field was pretty terrible for the most part. People were slipping all over the place. Maybe you make some play with a hook and ladder that somebody slips and you get away to the end zone and you win on a miracle play. Now all of a sudden it's the best Super Bowl in the world again. I don't know. A little gripe. But. It also it also looked like the ball kind of came out of his hand. Weird. Be a weird because weird. Mm-hmm. we've seen Jalen Hurts throw a deep ball. Yeah, and he can throw it 50, 60 yards. Right. Yeah, and it was much shorter. Yeah, if he, yeah. like I've seen him step into a throw and make a deep throw. Mm-hmm. On that one, it just looked strange the yeah. way he tried to throw the ball. I guess the other thing that I thought of too, now that we're thinking about it, um, 
the Pat McAfee show brought it up and pointed it out really well too. The last play for the Eagles special teams was all also horrendous. One, the punter had a terrible punt. Gave it flat line, short kick to Kadarius Tony, allowed him to get it all the way into scoring range for the Chiefs, which basically set up the, the game. Um and just their special teams play on that play was awful. Um Yeah, all that's some yeah. so like also you you're not supposed to give up that punt in that situation. Right. That punt return. Another thing. So there's multiple facets of the game that the Eagles just kind of, I guess you can kind of say choked away. Um, but it's just unfortunate because Jalen Hurts just played his butt off. And it's good for us to see. Um, I know I was super happy about it because, you know, we've been kind of toting Jalen Hurts ever since draft day. Um, he was always one of my favorites. So it's cool to see him progressing in the NFL and finally – you know, uh, getting his his spotlight, I guess. Yeah, they'll they'll probably be the favorites in the NFC next year again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, them and the Lions. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, at another time. Uh, soon draft. Well, yeah, NFL draft stuff coming soon. So yeah, not too. Yeah, well, there'll be a lot of Lions talk. Yeah, and there's already some movement. Derek Carr got released uh, from the Raiders, yeah. so he is free to sign wherever, which is going to be wild. Also, the Eagles' offensive and defensive coordinators have been hired. Yep. Yeah, shouts out to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Eric Bieniemy. Yeah. Still no job. But, uh, yeah, what are the what are the Eagles going to do about their leading coordinators? Yeah, that will be interesting. Um, and the Colts actually have a pretty, pretty decent – or, no, it was the Panthers. I think it's the Panthers that have a pretty good coaching staff now. I think they took the Eagles' defensive coordinator – I can't remember exactly, but they have Frank right now. That's where Deuce Staley went. Yeah. Um, so there's some big names over at the Panthers coaching. We'll get into all the offseason stuff eventually, but um let's move on to college hoops. Malik's favorite part of the segment oh, of the show. The the best. Um I, I, I'm so excited. As we said, MSU's game against Minnesota got postponed. That was supposed to be played uh tonight, I believe. Um, so maybe that'll get moved. They are going to play at Michigan on Saturday. So that should be a good game, even though Michigan has had their issues, per se. Uh, last night, Michigan on the big stage, ESPN2, playing Wisconsin. The big stage. At Wisconsin. Against Wisconsin's ugliest jerseys I've ever seen. Also, honestly, one of their ugliest teams, <laughs> if we're being honest. I think this this might be one of the least talented Wisconsin teams I've seen in a while. Like, they... They're always well coached, so they'll play good enough basketball, but yeah. they just don't have any of the those like close to star guys. Right. Yeah. They don't have the, And Michigan took it out. Yeah. I didn't know they played last night until the game was happening. I didn't even know they were playing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it until late either. Um when I was checking ESPN, I saw that they were on. There was like a minute left. They were down by four or five. I was like, yeah, I'll tune in. Maybe they can make a, a comeback. And they looked awful. <laughs> and I only watched it for a minute, and they looked awful. Um, I don't know. Malik, wh- where are you at with this team? Are you just done? Are you done with them? So. You going to watch this weekend's well, game? I've been done. I'll probably watch this weekend's game because whenever they beat Michigan State, it's a good time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm just looking at the stats right now. They started Will Cheddar. But nice, nice. Yeah, he didn't get many shots. He got some rebounds. Uh, Hunter had twelve and twelve. Jet didn't have a good get, good shooting game. Kobe Bufkin had twenty one on fifteen shots. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Six points off the bench. Six bench points. Nice. Is that good, Joey? Uh, typically not. Okay, I, I just wanted to ask. Usually, uh, uh, you yeah. never know though. Yeah, they suck. They're not good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they'll get an NIT invite because they might just lose out the rest of the I don't know. They they might lose out the rest of the season. What are they playing for now? What is Juwan telling them? I don't know. It seems like it's not working, <laughs> whatever he's saying. Like now, even like now their resume, like they, they, they don't have the only thing they have left is Illinois and Indiana at the end of the season. Listen, after there was a quote from Juwan Howard. 
after the the Indiana loss, which yeah, if they win out, they'll be nineteen and twelve. Did we we didn't talk about the Indiana game last week, did we? Um, that was after the podcast, right? Yeah. What day was that game? I don't know. I'm looking right now. It was uh, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So it was after. So we didn't talk about the Indiana game. Yeah. They're their oh, last boy. shot. It was, yeah. It was kind of my last hope of me supporting them. Mm-hmm. They were in control for a lot of the game. Last four minutes, they couldn't score a, a bucket. Yeah. Uh, Juwan Howard didn't run anything. <laughs> he just mainly watched, let them ISO. Mm-hmm. Um. Hunter Dickinson was playing great. Yeah. Uh, he only ended up with 10 shots. Trace Jackson Davis took 23. Oh, yeah, that was that game. Because right? yep. when, when you have a high-level, all-American level big, what do you think you should do with him, Joey? Yeah. You try to give it you to give him. You give him. And when he's having a good night, you try to feed him. 11 to 23 shooting, 28 and 11. That, that was a big reason why Indiana won the game. Yeah. If you remember uh, a lot of uh, Hunter Dickinson's early success, it was uh, when he would – take people one-on-one and score and then the team would have to double him yeah and it would leave other people open uh hmm. yeah interesting now even when he gets double team now half the time he makes a bad pass yeah but yeah they ended up losing that game by one at home embarrassing mm-hmm. another embarrassing loss and back to what i was gonna say after the indiana game juan howard said uh we drew up something else and i think the guys just did some did whatever they wanted to do that sounds like a disconnect, so, Malik. I don't know about you. Mike, has this been a theme all throughout the season, Joan? I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of the season has just been playground ball, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, I kind of understand why you let your son do what he does because he's such a high-level shooter. But, I mean, what, what, did, what do you say at this point? What do you say? Yeah. He himself said, yeah, we drew something else up, but they just – they just went rogue. They did what they wanted. They did whatever they – that's a nice culture you're setting up there, Juwan. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I Michigan basketball. I, I believe maybe if they went out, there's a prayer and a hope. Their best wins right now are Northwestern. Yeah. Because Northwestern is probably going to make the tournament, and they, they've beaten them twice. Yeah. And all their other big, big games, they lost by – a couple points. They blew out Maryland at home. Uh, they almost beat Iowa, but then they gave up a four-point play. They got blown out by Penn State. Yeah, that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, they should have beat Indiana, didn't. Yep. Could have beat yeah. Purdue. The, this team was just a could have been. Could have beat Could have been, should have been team. Could have beat Virginia. You know, North Carolina. Could have Listen. Beat. Yeah. Go blue. But they also could have lost to Eastern. <laughs> Listen, uh, it's it's yeah, yeah I, I think this is one of this it's a, there is like a slim chance if they were able to win out do like a classic Michigan thing where they win out make a big run something like that I don't know uh, they've never had a season like this and it's a false positive a but I'm going for it yeah last season it seems like of most of Juwan's whatever he had magic touch has started to run out because yeah. that probably wasn't really a sweet 16 team but they ended up making it Right, and this would be wild if Michigan missed the tournament because it has been a long time now. Yes, Michigan has one of the longer streaks of making the tournament or being good in the tournament. Uh, yeah, I I don't want to hear any excuses about young players. I don't want to hear. Yeah, you got Hunter Dickinson, you got a bunch of talent. You clearly could have beaten some really good teams because you almost did. Right, but you lost because yep. you just can't figure out what to do in tight games. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst Michigan basketball seasons I've watched in a long after time. A, after a very good era. Yeah. Yep. We were blessed for a long Football time. Football and basketball, I guess, switched back. <laughs> right. They switched back around. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's take a look at some of the other rankings as we are, like I said, basically a month away from uh, March Madness, which means probably first week of March we will have our – tournament podcast i'll have to uh mark that date on the calendar mm-hmm. and start uh pulling our guests together um but we have a new team at the top alabama sitting pretty yeah. 22 and 3 
They're number one in the country um, after Purdue lost to Northwestern, I'll add. Um, and Alabama's just kind of been kind of been cruising for the most part. Besides maybe their loss to Oklahoma, uh, they've they've just been playing. Yeah, their game against Auburn was tight for a lot of the game, but then they separated in the yeah. end. And they do have a big test tonight. They are going to play Tennessee. That's going to be that's going to be a big game. Yes, they play at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that'll be real yeah. tough. I think Tennessee is one and two in their last three, so they're kind of yeah yeah bad time to start going through a rough patch. Right, but honestly, it's always scary being number one because it feels like you don't you don't sit there for very long. Um, Houston still kind of you know hanging around that top three area yeah. that they've been in almost all season. Purdue did fall down to three after that loss to Northwestern. UCLA all the way up to four. They have Amari Bailey back, mm -hmm. and that's big. Yeah. He had 24 in his first game back. Yeah. Big-time freshman. They're going to be a good team heading into the tournament. Uh, Kansas, they're right back there, sitting at five. They're going to play uh, Baylor this weekend, which should be a good game. Then they played TCU, so they got a tough schedule ahead of them. Um, Texas down to six. Uh, Virginia to seven, Arizona down to eight, Baylor up to nine, Tennessee down to 10, Marquette at 11, Kansas State's at 12, but they're going to fall after they just lost to Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, Gonzaga's at 13. They are kind of creeping back up. Indiana at 14, Miami at 15, Xavier 16, uh, 17 is St. Mary's, Creighton at 18, Iowa State 19, Connecticut 20. San Diego State 21, TCU, NC State, Providence, and FAU rounding out that. Uh, NC State's probably going to fall out because they just lost to Syracuse. Um, Providence probably going to move up a little bit as they just beat uh, Baylor or Creighton. And then TCU is going to be interesting because they just lost uh, to Baylor. Then they're going to play Iowa State tonight. Oklahoma State over the weekend, TCU might get bounced out this weekend. Um, and Oklahoma State might come in. I don't know. It, it could be wild this weekend, actually. Um, anything you wanted to point out, Malik? So, my first team I want to bring up isn't even ranked right now. And they are a team that I, I think nobody outside of where they are, their university, yeah, and maybe a few SEC analysts are talking about. The Texas A&M Aggies. Yep, they're ten and two in conference right now. They're number two in the SEC. Mm -hmm. They're eighteen and seven overall, twelve and one at home, three game win streak, and they are unranked. Yeah, one spot ahead of number ten Tennessee. They're unranked. Yeah, yeah, it, it's kind of getting wild. Yeah, for they, a lot of these teams. They have such a we well first of all they have buzz williams at coach who's mm -hmm. been a high quality coach for such a long time yeah formerly at marquette mm -hmm. but they have a roster full of transfers and like mismatched recruits and guys julius marble yeah he's their starting power forward came from msu came mm -hmm. back home to texas yep <laughs> he's having a good season henry coleman a recruit from duke that transferred to texas a&m they're both having good seasons <laughs> And honestly, the rest of their roster, they they have like a few four star guards, uh, Manny Obaseki, uh, Wade Taylor, they a uh, transfer from Virginia Tech, Tyrese Radford, mm -hmm. who I think is their leading scorer. <clears throat> He's averaging thirteen. Who's their leading scorer? Their leading scorer is actually <coughs> Wade Taylor. He's averaging fifteen, mm -hmm. but yeah, they don't have any like superstar players. They have a bunch of quality guys that just play their roles. Yeah. And they're pretty well balanced. They have three guys <coughs> averaging double figures. Mm -hmm. And then it's like nine, eight, six. They, they're just a well-balanced team. They're not that great shooting from the three, but they shoot almost 45% from the field. Yeah. They play good defense. They're just a quality basketball team. Yep. <coughs> and every good team they play against, they give them a fight. Mm-hmm. And they're ten and two in conference, and they deserve some light. Yeah, because coming up to the conference tournaments, they might be a team that could finally get in the spotlight if they make a run to the conference championship game like they did last year. Yeah, 
but they ended up in the NIT mm-hmm. because of a last minute run. Right. So Texas A and M is one team I wanted to bring up. Uh, is there a team you want to bring up? Uh, I was going to bring up my one of my tournament teams last year that I, I don't think they're going to make like a deep run or anything. But now that they've been there again, um, UC Santa Barbara, I like that team. You're, you're starting to bring up those mid majors now that yeah, we're getting close. I, I, I told you I'm, I'm going to start <laughs> start uh, doing it again. Um, we saw um, was it, it was Jalen Williams last year out of UC Santa Barbara, big guard again. They uh, have he, a, went to, he went to Santa Clara. Santa Clara. Yeah, okay, he went to Santa Clara. so I'm getting them mixed up. Yeah. Uh, Santa Barbara has a similar comparison. They have a big guard, AJ. Uh, oh, I just AJ. I think his last name starts with a W. AJ Should've had his name or pulled or up, Joey. AJ Mitchell or something. Should have had his name pulled Shoot. up. I just had it in my head. If you pull UC Santa Barbara, you got to have the. Oh man, why did I? How did I stumble on that? <laughs> I had it all prepared. Anyway, he's a six-five guard, big guard. He's been leading their team, averaging about fifteen points. But they're one of those teams. That, you know, I always favor in the tournament where it's not necessarily one guy every night. They have consistency out of their two main guys. And then the rest of the team just shoots really well. Um, And they're always kind of a a spooky team to play. They're playing tonight against UC Irvine, those Anteaters, that I also actually like as a team. Um, Two teams that are just kind of fun to watch. UC Irvine is another one of those kind of three-point shooting bombing teams um, that are just kind of not. Yeah, it's A.J. Mitchell. Jeez. <laughs> A.J. Mitchell. He's 6'5", uh, guard for them, kind of the leading guy for them. Um, is always kind of cool to watch. So that's a team that I like. And then um, the other team that I was going to bring up as well that we saw make a big run in the past is Oral Roberts. Max Asmus. He's still around. Yeah. He's one of those guys now that feels like he's been seven years playing. Still one of the best scorers in the country. He's like a perfect college basketball player. Um, they also they have a big man transfer that came from Arkansas. Connor Vanover. Yes, seven foot four mm-hmm. can hit threes. Yes. Yeah. So they're a fun team to be on the lookout for. We've seen them make. What, did they get to the Elite Eight? Uh, did they get all the way there? They made it to the, the I know they made 16. it to the Sweet 16. I can't remember if they got past there. But they they they, they, they at least made it to the Sweet 16. Yeah, I'm going to look it up real quick. Um, but those are a couple of teams that I'm looking out for. Still I haven't I haven't deep dived into the mid majors, but I, I'm getting there. Yeah, I've I've mostly paid some attention to the better mid majors and I'm going to bring one up since you brought up mid majors. Mm-hmm. We're going to go to the Missouri Valley Conference. They always have some of the most exciting like conference championship games. Mm-hmm. They always come down to the last second. Right. And the team at the top of the standings this year are the Drake Bulldogs. Yep. And we've seen them in the tournament the past yeah. couple of years. They're 21 and 6, 12 and 4 in conference, 12 and 1 at home. And they have a player mm-hmm. that could be a potential pro. Yeah. A kid that was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. He chose to stay home and play for his dad. Mm-hmm. His dad is the head coach at Drake, Tucker DeVries. He is a six foot seven, two hundred ten pound, honestly like shooting guard slash combo small forward. He's averaging nineteen six and two assists. Yeah, forty six percent from the field, forty percent from three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he is a deadly shooter. Once he gets going, it's hard to stop him. And he's a type of player that can really blow up in the tournament. Yeah, they have the type of team that's tough. It can make a run to the Sweet 16 or, or Elite Eight. <clears throat> and they have a star in Tucker DeVries. Who could get them there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, college basketball, like we said, we're starting starting to ramp it up a little bit because we're getting closer. It's getting more exciting. Um, starting to do my research so that when we get to the tournament, I can really tell you about some of these little schools because the little schools are the fun ones. To talk about half of them, we won't know about until the conference tournaments. Right, some teams come out of nowhere. Yeah, and we like St. Peter's last year. Right, and then a lot of them will be on the bubble, so we got to figure out um, where they're gonna come from. Um, all right, 
that's college basketball. We got to get to the NBA real quick. Um, starting to run out of time a little bit. Um, this NBA trade line was nuts. There was a lot of crazy stuff. Um, we knew about the Kyrie Irving trade going into it. Um, we kind of talked about that last week. We've seen Kyrie play with Luka. There was a game where they both had 30 points, um, which pretty darn good, if uh, you ask me. Um, and I believe they're one and two playing together, so they're still yeah, figuring it out. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is that in the games without Luka Doncic, they went 3-0 and with Kyrie Irving. Um, so that's interesting, but that's kind of like them figuring out their, uh, um, chemistry together. Yeah. So that's kind of expected. What we didn't expect was Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is now a Phoenix son. Are they immediately back to the championship favorite? Well, I, that's not even a question. They're, they are by far. <laughs> the betting favorites to make the finals at this point. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's hard to not agree with it. I mean, yeah, Chris Paul, it's clear that he's made a little bit of a a decline with his age. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be relied on to score so many points. Now he can just be a point guard and that's what he's best at. Right. Last night he had a game where he had 17 points and 19 assists. Yeah. So he still has a little left in him. Mm -hmm. You still have Devin Booker who scored. Over 30 last yeah, night. When he's healthy, he's one of the best scorers in the league. When DeAndre Ayton is locked in, yeah, when so, he's locked in. So it's funny. When I was I was thinking about this trade the other day, and everybody was like, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Kevin Durant. Kind of forgot that DeAndre Ayton is on this team. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he has potential to be good. Like, he had a double-double the other night. Yeah, uh, They won't get Kevin Durant until after the All-Star break because of his injury. Um. Well, the full details of the trade was Kevin Durant and TJ Warren, my guy, going back to the Suns. Um, and the Nets got Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, four first round picks, or five first round picks. They also got Dorian Finney Smith from Dallas. Yes. Um, and yeah, pretty good haul for the Nets, actually. Um, might help them slowly in their weird rebuild. Yeah. Um, and they got your boy Spencer. Yeah, Spencer Didwitty back to the Nets. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, that was also a part of the trade where the Bucks got Jay Crowder, Pacers got George Hill, Serge Ibaka, Jordan Wara, and some future picks. Um, a couple other little trades that we'll go over. Clippers got Mason Plumley, traded away to Reggie Jackson and a second round pick. Reggie Jackson was then bought out. And he's been signed to Denver. Denver, yes. Yep. Um, he's from Colorado, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, homecoming. So he'll be the backup there, which should be a pretty good role for him. Um, 76ers got a deal done where they got Jalen McDaniels, a couple picks. Hornets got Svi Mikhailuk, uh, second round picks. Trailblazers, I think, actually got decent haul for this. They got Cam Reddish, Matisse Thibel, I... and a first round pick. I don't know. I mean, they really only traded away Josh Hart. You I get, think Josh Hart is better than the both of them. Even I would, though, even I'm, though he wasn't fitting in amazingly with them, yeah. It's another bet on Cam Reddish is going to be free now. Yeah, part four. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just a big yeah. fan of Matisse Thybul. He's one of my favorite young guys. I don't think he's progressed at all on offense. No, he's still really good on defense, but he hit what four threes in his first game with the Blazers. <laughs> Everybody was excited about it. Let's see how it. long that lasts. Um, yeah. I mean, the Knicks got Josh Hart. That's a good trade for them, yeah, too. He's he's already – he had a 30 points for them a few nights ago. Yeah. Um, Eric Gordon finally got out of Houston. Listen, man. Congrats. Congrats. Applause. He's gone. He's back to he's the Clippers, back though. to the Clippers. Um, so, Eric Gordon on the Clippers. John Wall. <laughs> John. Listen, have you seen the clips of him on Theo Pinson's podcast talking no. about – he? He fully laid out how horrible it was in Houston. Yeah. <laughs> and then they trade for him. Man. Awkward. Uh, Danny Green went to the Rockets as well. He got bought out. He'll probably go to some contender. I can't remember. Pretty, he signed him with Cleveland where he started. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. A lot uh, of homecomings going on. Grizzlies get Luke Kennard. Nice. Good for them. Another shooter. Yeah, they needed something. Um, Celtics got Mike Muscala. 
the few games I've seen, he's hit two or three threes. Yeah, all of them. they gave up Justin Jackson. Yeah, honestly, good move for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it kind of a weird, but I think it could be good for the Pelicans. They got Josh Richardson, giving up Devontae Graham. They needed defense and a bunch yeah. of second round picks. Devontae Graham, kind of a one way player, really good offensive player. Um, I also think he was going to be a free agent, so not wanting to pay him. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the Pistons one in a minute. The Suns got Darius Baisley. I haven't heard his name in so long. <laughs> and the Thunder got Dario Saric, who's been thrown around for years. Yeah. Um, the Hawks got Bruno Fernando and Garrison Matthews, which Bruno Fernando has already been a Hawk at one point, I believe. Yeah, he was. Um, and the Rockets get Justin Holiday and Frank Kaminsky. Um, the Lakers got involved. They traded away Thomas Bryant to the Nuggets. And then the Lakers got Mo Bamba, Davon Reed, and second round pick. Clippers got Bones Highland. Magic got Patrick Beverly, who was bought out. Um, he's back on the T Wolves. I have no idea. I, they don't I know yet. I haven't seen him. Maybe it's not back. Yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, the big LA trade was the Lakers got D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt. Um, the Timberwolves got Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander Walker. And then the Jazz got Russell Westbrook, Juan Toscano Anderson, Damian Jones, and a first round pick. Yeah. The uh, plans are to buy out Russell Westbrook, I believe. Yeah, they don't fully <clears throat> know what they're doing yet. Um, they're giving Russell Westbrook the all star break to decide what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, and then a sneaky good pickup for the Raptors. They got Jakob Pertle back after they were the team that drafted him. Uh, the Spurs got Ken Birch, a first round pick, and two second round picks. Uh, Yakov already had a 30 point game the other night. I think it was last night, actually. I did not know that. Yes. And it's one of his first games. Uh, so that was most of it. And then the Pistons got involved, like I kind of alluded to. Uh, and let, let, yeah, let's we'll uh, talk about it. The Pistons <laughs> yeah. got James Wiseman, former number two, number one, number one, number one pick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it was the LaMelo draft. Um, James Wiseman to the Pistons. Warriors getting back Gary Payton the second with some future round picks. The Trailblazers got Kevin Knox. Good for them and him, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Good they job. also got five future second round picks, which is a weird thing that's become a trend. And unfortunately, the Pistons gave up Sadiq Bay, who is now an Atlanta Hawk. I was gonna get a Sadiq Bay teal jersey. Yeah. I was going to. I know some people that got them. So, what do you, what and are your thoughts on this trade? Because this is a weird one. I know that there had been some some rumors that Sadiq Bay was going to leave. It felt like a weird season for Sadiq. I don't I don't know the internals if maybe there was something up. But James Wiseman, this it's not <laughs> this this is not, this this isn't going to make much sense. But it's it's coming to my mind for some reason. This is like a weird, different version of the Blake Griffin trade. In a sense that when it happened, none of us knew how to feel. Mm -hmm. We all were like, um, so <laughs> I guess they're trying to win, yeah. but he's an injury-prone all-star, and he probably won't. I mean, and he gave us all to Detroit, and I respect Blake to this day. Mm -hmm. But what well, trading him, it didn't do anything. Yeah, and I almost feel the same way with this trade, where it's like, uh, he has a lot of potential. He was the top pick. Mm -hmm. He's injury prone. <laughs> yep. I mean, if even if he's good, what does it really mean? Right. Where does he fit into this? Where does I mean, if you start Wiseman and Dale, they're different types of players. Yeah. I mean, Wiseman would be out on the perimeter more. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I guess it will help defense and rebound. Again, I theoretically, mean, I like the idea of James Wiseman and Jalen Duran. But there's a lot of Beef Stew fans out there. And I've said it before. I don't think Beef Stew is, you know, a guy that's going to be a starter in this league. I don't yeah. think he's that Him good. as a backup. I would love if he stayed as a backup big. Yeah. Can he buy into that role? The, Possibly. I hope so. Possibly. Yeah, I would hope so. But that, I guess, is what my doubt is, is that maybe that – upsets beef stew and i don't know maybe there's a rift there um because now the other thing that you set up for is that 
the Pistons are still in line to possibly get the number one pick. And I know, like, I've joked about it in, like, we trust in Victor or whatever, but what if the Pistons do get that number one pick now? Do you still, you have to take Victor? <laughs> you have to take, yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. But now you're stuck Victor. with James Wiseman, Jalen Duran, and Victor Wembignana. Yeah. Which, theoretically, you could maybe play them all together, <laughs> which is wild. Yeah. Um, you're, you're three through five being which I would love that. all over seven feet. It's kind of like the experiment Cleveland did last year yeah. with Mark and Mobley and Jared Allen. Toronto did that last night. They played Jakob Pertl. They played Scotty Barnes. They played Pascal Siakam and Chris Boucher. No, they played, um, shoot. Boucher still came off the bench, but they oh. were like, I mean, they weren't like all seven footers. They were but, all like 6'10 or bigger. But they went with a big lineup, oh, okay. long, lengthy. Let me see if I can try to pull I mean, it up. I mean, if you drive Victor, he's, he's like a two through five, one through five almost. Yeah. So, But I also just don't know, like, would the Pistons be willing to do a lineup like that? Exactly. Uh, to get the most out of those guys? I don't know. Uh, the nice thing is that if they don't get that number one pick and we can uh, um, take Miller from Alabama, that – he would slot right into that three spot almost perfectly uh, to replace Sadiq. But I don't know. Oh, they played uh, Pressures, Achua. Okay. He's like 6'9", almost So they six, did nine. Siakam, Achua, Scotty Barnes, Yaga Pearl, and then Fred Van Vliet. Um, so it's a, it's like a fairly big lineup. Yeah, that's a really big lineup. Um, long and lengthy, at least. So that was kind of interesting. Um, but, yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know where this fits in. It's It's odd. It's odd. Um, and I mean, I we gotta trust Troy Weaver. Is that still I, in play? I've, I've seen. Is uh, that still a thing? I don't know if it's a big. Ch- I've seen a chunk of Pistons fans <coughs> going panic button and kind of reverting and going like revisionist history on all of Troy Weaver. Yeah, <coughs> and I'm not doing that yet. Yeah. Yes, the Cade pick was easy to make. Mm-hmm. Yes, Jaden Ivey was easy. Yes, to make. the Jaden Ivey. But he still made the Jalen Duran move. He still picked Sadiq Bay in the teens. Mm-hmm. He still picked B. Stu in the 20s. Mm-hmm. He evaluated this talent, and he picked the right guys. Mm-hmm. And even though Killian was picked too high. He went and got Bojan Bogdanovic. He went and got Bojan Bogdanovic. He picked Isaiah Livers in the second round, who I still think could be a keeper. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> He's done some good things. Yeah. But this is a head scratcher. Mm-hmm. And the idea that they're cooking up, we we don't know what it fully yeah. is. And it now turns into, again, this is going to be a huge offseason for this team um, going forward. They're going to have some cap space. They're going to have a high draft pick. I mean, they're, we know they're just going to sign, like, the good veterans that aren't costly. That's, pre- like, there's there's no star coming to Detroit right now. I, I, that, that's not It's happening. hard to say. You you are investing in Cade and Jaden and Jalen Dern mm-hmm. and whoever this draft pick is. Yeah, you don't throw a random star into whatever. Mm-hmm. the The pieces you have are what you're are, are what they're investing in. And James Wiseman, I, I guess. Yeah. Now, at least for now. Mm-hmm. And I, again, if they can figure out James Wiseman, it'll be another steal yeah. for the Pistons. But it, free agency will mainly be putting the right veterans around the young guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, I don't know, maybe they make a, a big splash in the offseason. They try to turn around Beef Stew and uh, James Wiseman or something. This this free agent class also isn't anything spectacular. So no, no, not necessarily. But it, it's interesting. So there's no real player to give big money to in this situation. Yeah. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, all right, we got five minutes left. So I want to talk about All Star Weekend. Is this weekend? It's come it's up. this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. <laughs> right, man. It's it's kind of depressing. As a kid, mm-hmm. I would have this circled on our calendar. Exactly. Every year, I I would look months ahead to All Star Weekend. Yeah. I don't even think about it now. Yeah. It's partly their fault, and it's also just because we've grown up. But yeah, it is. It's it sucks. All right. So we have all the stuff for. Um, All Star Saturday night, which you know is pretty pretty exciting. Um, we're gonna go through and pick who we think is gonna win. We got the skills competition, 
where they're still doing the teams of three. We have team on Tedekumpo. We have team Utah Jazz because it's at Utah. And the rookie team. Who do you pick? Do you know who the do you know no. the teams? Okay. The Ante the Ante <laughs> Kumbos, know the Ante are the brothers. Yeah. The Jazz are Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton, and Lord, uh Walker Kessler. Okay. That's who it is. Um Team Rookie, Paolo Bancaro, Jabari Smith, Jay Ivey. Give me team rookie. I kind of like the team rookie too, but I'm a little scared. I think the Utah Jazz team could be really good. Uh Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton, Walker Kessler. Like guys, again, the Utah team has something to prove. So I think they could win it. Uh, I'll go with Team Jazz just to shake it up. Um, in the three-point contest, as always, lately, three-point contest, one of the best. We got, you know who you're picking. <laughs> we got Do we J even need to go through? Okay. Yes. We, well, just to give it to the people. We got Jason Tatum, Kevin Herter, Tyler Hero, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, Damian Lillard, and Fernie Simons, who I would assume is going to get replaced because he's, yeah, he's hurt. having an MRI. I believe today, actually. Yeah. Um, and Lori Markinen. Put. Oh my God. Utah. Put Isaiah Joe in. No, Utah Watanabe. Pay He's attention. Watanabe. Pay is attention to what's happening, Joey. Put Isaiah Joe in the three point contest. No. <laughs> OKC Thunder. Utah Utah would be fun. Watanabe is Yuta leading the league fun. in yeah. efficiency from three, and he's not in it. Um, I'm picking Kevin Herter. I can't go against my guy. I'm picking Buddy Heald. It's a That's pretty solid pick. Yeah. I think a good dark horse is Tyler Hero. I think a good dark horse is name the last four again. Uh, Buddy Heald, Damian Lillard, probably the replacement, and Laurie Markkinen. I think Dame is a good dark horse, but I'm going with yeah. Buddy. All righty. And then we got the dunk contest. Oh, boy. This, this, this is, listen... We got Mac McClung. Listen, let, let me can, let me tell you something, Joey. Can I, can I tell you something? Go for it. Kevin, Kenya Martin Jr., incredible in-game dunker. He's mm -hmm. dunking on everybody. Mm -hmm. We don't know what he can do in, in a contest. Yep. Trey Murphy, he's, he's, he has, he's had some surprising poster dunks. He can get up off the floor. I, I don't know if he has anything in his, in his bag. Yeah. Who's the other guy? Jericho Sims. Jericho. Big guys, super tall guys never win yeah. these contests. Joey. I loved him in college. Mighty. But. Mini. Mac McClung. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me tell you something about a ball is life mixtape, Joey. Between the legs, dunks in game. Yeah. You want to talk about a contest dunker? Mm -hmm. This guy, he, he is a contest dunker. Yeah. He barely misses dunks. He's got them all in his bag. Mac McClung. And the Delaware, whatever their mascot is, Blue Hens, I don't know what they are. The Delaware something. Yeah. G League Dunker wins the contest. Mac McClung all the way. Nice. Um, I also think Mac McClung might win it. But I will say that I think Kenyon Martin Jr. probably will show something. He probably has a few things up his sleeve. Yeah. I think it would be the, those His two bounce guys. is insane. Yeah. And then uh, the All-Star game. You excited for it? Nah. No. Nah. I mean with the with the ending the way they do it now where they have to hit a certain score it makes it more entertaining. Mm -hmm. Last year's All-Star game was fun. Wasn't that where Steph hit like 15 threes? Yeah, I think so actually. Yeah. That yeah, last year's All-Star game was really entertaining. So, I mean, it it should be fun, especially since De'Aaron is in now and um who was the other replacement? It was De'Aaron um, and oh my gosh, who was it? Yeah, I don't remember. It was another guy. I'm I'm happy. De'Aaron and Anthony Edwards. I think those oh, are the okay. replacements. Yeah. Happy they're in. It should be fun. Yeah. Anthony Edwards is probably going to, them two are going to try to prove a point when they're in. And mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. Yeah. That should be good. Um, All right. I was going to have us do a draft, but we don't have time for that. Um, Also, don't have a time to go, don't have time to go over the celebrity game, which I always think is kind of funny. Um, but tons of sports ahead of us. We got some good, good college basketball this weekend. NBA All-Star Weekend, Daytona 500 if you're interested in that. Um, yeah. So we'll have a lot to talk about as well next week. Um, but this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you then. Thoughts and prayers to everyone at MSU. Hopefully this weekend's game takes a little bit off of people's minds.